Hello, we're into our next part of the One Peter set apart series and today we are looking at 1 Peter 4 verses 1 to 6. So I'll read that for us to start with. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude because whoever suffers in the body has finished with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living and they heap abuse on you. <clears throat> but they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Obviously, if you didn't get all of that, my cough in the middle, you can have a read back of, to yourself of it um, now or at the end. But Peter starts this chapter with the word, therefore, anyone that's heard notes from me before know when there's a word like therefore, I get excited because to me it's linking something. It's saying because of this, you need to do this. It's giving us an action. It's giving us perhaps some practical help of what we need to do. And so Peter, another way of looking at the word therefore is what is it there for? Love that. So Peter has put therefore right at the start so why why is he put it there and it's because he wants to link it into what he's just said to what he's just written back in 1 Peter 3 and Stephen packed for us last week that part of the scripture where it looks at this idea of living by doing good that even if the people we're doing good for don't want it or don't return that goodness of attitude towards us even if persecution comes as a result of us doing good we should still keep living that way why because we are blessed because we are children of God because we know the truth that we live in we know what Jesus says about us we know that we are saved and we know that God has called us as a result of that to live this holy set apart life it doesn't mean that we're sinless it doesn't mean that we still won't get things wrong but that we need to live in this way of God seeing us as righteous. And we've unpacked a lot of that earlier on in this 1 Peter series. So Peter is moving on from that doing good and he's linking it into a different type of persecution that we may suffer from. And that is persecution through the choice we've made to live for God, to live God's way. And he's basically saying we will experience this in some shape or form at some point in our lives, whether it's verbal abuse, persecution, even physical abuse, maybe. And we may think of that in a way of the persecuted church that, oh, it won't ever be that bad for us. But actually, Peter's saying here we need to be ready. We need to be aware that this could happen. And he's trying to give us some skills, some tips here that will help us. So first of all, he's saying acknowledge and be prepared for the suffering you may have because of choosing to live for God. Firstly, to help us, let's remember, he says, that Christ suffered in bodily form when he was on this earth and he suffered in bodily form for us. He says we should arm ourselves with this truth I love that language. It's the idea of it being that we're ready for a battle. We're prepared for the battle, knowing what Jesus did, knowing what he went through will give us all we need for that battle, for that suffering, for that persecution that could come. 
And that to arm ourselves means we've got to have that same attitude that Christ had. And if we think about those last 24, 48 hours before Jesus went to the cross, he knew what was coming. Yes, he asked God to come up with a different way to to not mean it had to be that way. But he said, your will, not mine, be done. He knew what was coming as much as he didn't want it, as much as he didn't like it, because he knew the pain and the separation from his father God was coming and what that would mean and what that would feel like. But there are things he did in that time, in those last 24, 48 hours that helped him prepare. What did he do? He prayed. He spent time with his father God. He had a meal and time with his closest friends. He tried to get his closest friends to pray for him. Some of them fell asleep because it was the middle of the night. But he knew what would help him. He knew what would give him the strength, the courage to go through with it. He knew what he was about to experience. And these were some of the techniques and the tips and the ideas that he put into place to help him prepare. And I think in that list, there's a lot there that we could take that would help us in our daily battles, in our daily struggles, when things come at us that we're not expecting, if we've got some of these things in place. Something else that Peter talks on in these verses that can help us in our acknowledgement and preparation that suffering can come our way is how we view ourselves to see that we are changed since encountering Jesus. We are no longer living the world's way, but we are living in this set apart way, as we've talked about. We need to see ourselves that way every day. Yes, we're going to get it wrong. Yes, we are still going to sin. But we are not slaves to that anymore. We are set free from that living in this holy, righteous way that God has called us to. But we also need to have a frame of mind where we're expecting persecution from this world to come. People that don't believe as we do, people that are not Christians, do not understand why we live the way we live. It makes no sense to them. They don't understand why we would not want to live off earthly pleasures as they do. But we know we're not just called to live here on earth, but we are called to live for eternity that Jesus has provided a way for us to access. And how we live on this earth affects not only our eternity, but can impact and affect others as well. We're not just living for this one life, but we are choosing to live with Jesus forever. And Jesus wants us to have a meaningful life here on earth, which will mean we'll have experiences, which means we will experience joy and pleasure. But it will be in the things that are good for us, that will impact us in a good and an encouraging way. But part of that whole thing of eternity and knowing we are saved and knowing we get to have eternity with Jesus means we are aware that there will be judgment, that God will judge. There will be a time where God shows his justice and those who have chosen not to live his way, but will have chosen to live the way of the world instead, will know his judgment and experience eternity without him. That idea should affect us, should impact us and affect our present living, not from us being scared or afraid of God, because we know the truth that we are children of God once we've accepted Jesus and are living his way. But actually, it should make us want to live more and more for him so that others can see the choices they're making and see what the end result will be. We should want to be living this way with the mindset of Christ, knowing he has the best for us in this world, knowing he wants us to live this way because he loves us, because he wants us to grow, because he wants us to develop, because he wants us to be in relationship with him. And we should want to live this way so we can show him that we love him and we want to do as he's asked us to do. 
In the middle of these six verses, we get this little list that Peter says of things that are connected to our old lives, our old way of being. And he lists things like debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, idolatry. And another way that we can look at this list, I think, is looking at, at it as a list of addictions, addictions to a life of comfort and of earthly pleasure. God is not saying we cannot have pleasure, but he's saying these things will lead us to a place that is not good for us, that will lead us into addictive and destructive lifestyles, meaning that we're living of the flesh and we're still connected to that rather than living God's way. And Peter is trying to say to us here, we are not slaves to that way of living anymore, to those behaviours. Even if those that are living that way don't understand it, doesn't mean that we should just go along with them. But actually, we need to recognise that God has given us a new way of living, a new way of being, one that will give us all we need and means that we no longer have to live in that kind of mind numbing sin, wasting our life, but actually instead have a life that is full of significance and impact. And in that final verse, verse six, Peter starts to say that the gospel, the good news of Jesus needs to be shown and explained so that people can see what God's standards are. They can see what God is calling anyone that wants to follow him to the life that he's calling us to not living to earthly fleshly standards. And saying that this is God's purpose for us in living this set apart way. Yes, we are saying no to certain things, things that are not good for us, things that will lead us into those kind of addictive and destructive lifestyles, not just for ourselves, but for those around us potentially as well. But yes, in saying no to some things, we're actually saying yes to other things. We're showing yet we're saying yes to loving others. We're saying yes to showing forgiveness and mercy. We're saying yes to the fact that persecution may come my way because I've chosen to live for God and to live his way. And by saying yes to all those things is going to show God's love and God's glory to others, whether they see it for the first time of us showing them or whether it takes an awful lot longer for them to see it. That is what we're doing by choosing to live this way. So I want to encourage you today with these verses. They can sound quite harsh on a first reading, quite condemnatory. But what God is trying to help us to understand here and what Peter's trying to articulate is that we need to be encouraged to persevere, to keep living God's way. And the verses that are coming up next week will talk even more into how we do this. And God is wanting us to be encouraged to keep living this set apart way to show God's love to those around us by living this way, even if they don't fully understand, even if persecution comes or ridicule comes. We need to be living for eternity whilst we're still on earth with God's grace, love and strength helping us every step of the way. Be encouraged and God bless.